In this episode of Microcast, we will be talking about the Onion Omega, built as an invention platform for the Internet of Things, comes enabled with Wi-Fi, and says it supports most popular languages such as Python and Node.js. In this episode, we will be walking through the very basic getting started steps to get your Onion Omega up and running so that it is ready to hack on. So there's a couple things to note right out of the box about the Omega. So we'll set this aside for a second and talk just about the main Omega module here. Get a close up of it there. You see that this is the antenna on this side, on the PCB there. But an important thing to know about just the Omega module itself is that these pins right here, these header pins are not standard spaced. They're not the normal 0.1 inch. So I have another header here that we can compare. Hopefully that can zoom okay. You can see that they do not have the same spacing. So, and they're also not as long. And so this is not going to fit right into your breadboard. So that's the first thing that you'll need to know. So that is why you are gonna need an expansion dock. And they sell various forms of these. They have uh, this expansion dock, they have a mini dock, an Arduino dock, and a battery dock. And so the first thing that we're going to do is mount the Omega to the, to the dock. And they have this little graphic to help you. This thing up here is meant to be the antenna to show you. So you're going to want to take the Omega and put it on like this with the antenna at the top. Now, they've helped you because if you look closely, the dock and the Omega have the same bevel-shaped edges here. And so if you put it in backwards, uh, it'll look funny. The edges will hang over. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just put this in here and you want to push it all the way down so that there are no spaces. You, you can't see any of the pins exposed. So <clears throat> once that's on the dock like that, we are ready to power it up. And to do that, you can just use a micro USB cable. So there's two USB ports on this and this is where they could have done a little bit better of a job silk screening. Uh, you have a switch on the side here, a button right here, a micro USB and a normal USB port right here. You can see those like that. And they do say in the set of instructions that the power goes here but it would have been nice just to put a little silk screen on the board to show that. And so we'll just go ahead and connect our micro USB cable here. And once that's plugged in, we are ready to boot this thing up. Okay, now that we have the Onion attached to the expansion dock and ready to go, uh, we come over here to onion.io to see where we go from here. And there's not really an obvious what to do next. Like I'm on the Omega page here on the site and there's just, where do I get started? I'm not sure. It turns out if you come all the way down to the bottom of any page, there is a link to get started down here. Kind of hidden in my opinion, I think they could make that a little bit more visible. But they do have the instructions here, get started with the Onion Omega, whether you're on a Mac, Windows, or Linux. And the instructions are there uh, if you wanna follow through them. But I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through them now. So I have the Omega set up here. Now I have the brightness turned way down on my camera. Um, that's not because I'm shooting in the dark here. I have that turned down on purpose so that we can see the lights uh, as they turn on on this, hopefully they show up okay. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and power it up. Now with the expansion dock, we already have power uh, connected with this micro USB connection just right here. And we're just gonna turn it on by using the switch on the side, pull it down. You see the light comes on and you'll see that this LED right here starts flashing. Uh, it's solid at first, but then it'll start to flash and what that means is that the Omega is booting up. And once it is done flashing, this normally takes about 20 seconds. Once it's done flashing, that means that it is booted up and ready to go. It's actually pretty quick. And we'll just wait a couple seconds for it here. And there it goes. So that means it's booted up and ready to go. Now, if we come over here uh, on our machine here, I'm on a Mac. And if we come up here to the Wi-Fi setting and we go to, um, you'll see here, you've got all the different things that are in range. Now, if we wait just a minute, 
we will see one for our omega. Now, sometimes this comes up for me right away. Sometimes it takes a little while. You saw it just come up right there. Omega dash, in my case, it's one ACD. You'll have something different. It'll be omega dash some other four digits. And so we're gonna go ahead and click on that because what the omega is doing at this point is it's acting as an access point. And so we're gonna connect directly to it. And once we get my connection symbol there, we can actually log into it directly from here. Now you can log into it uh, over the USB connection. I recommend first time getting started to connect to it this way. It's very simple. All you have to do is you come up here and you do omega-1acd.local and we'll hit enter. Now, this is not the first time I've done this on my Omega. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure why, you, there is an option to reset to factory. I'll show you that in a minute. But when you do that, it does not restore the startup experience. So if this is the very first time that you're doing this on your Omega, you will not see this login screen. You'll actually see this really nice um, interface that walks you through connecting it to your Wi-Fi, um, which is really slick. They've done a nice job with that. Since it's not my very first time, like I said, I'm not sure why that doesn't restore. I just get the login prompt. If you do get this, however, the default username is root and the password is onionier, O-N-I-O-N-E-E-R. And that will log us into the dashboard here. Now, I've tried to film this video several times. These guys are iterating so quickly on the firmware that I've had to reshoot it because this dashboard changes and new things uh, get added. And so I wanna just take you through a quick tour of what we have here. And the very first thing that I wanna look at is settings. We come into settings here and we have general settings. Now you can rename your Omega, which I think is a great uh, thing. You know, we, we connect to it by omega-1acd.local in my case, but if you want something that's a little easier to remember, go ahead and rename your Omega here. And then uh, we can set the time zone. In my case, uh, I'm on Pacific time right here. And then you can change the password from Onioneer to something more secure. I'll go ahead and skip that for now and just do save settings. Okay, next up we have Wi-Fi settings. So right after you get your Omega turned on, I would recommend configuring this so it can connect to your local uh, Wi-Fi network. And so we'll just go ahead and enable Wi-Fi it will start scanning for them. Mine is this SIDnet right here. And I will go ahead and put in my password, just like that, and then do configure Wi-Fi. And that's really all there is to it. At this point, now when you turn your Omega on, it will try to connect to this network by default, uh, which is pretty cool. They've done a really nice job with this. Now, next up we have this Wi-Fi AP settings. And by default, it's enabled, this access point mode. Now, you can turn this off and that would probably help if you are trying to deploy the Omega in a battery powered uh, situation. It's gonna pull less power that way. However, if you don't need that lower power uh, advantage, I would definitely recommend leaving it on because that means you can always connect to it as an access point if uh, for some reason you need to, uh, the Wi-Fi is down and it's not available, you can always connect directly to it this way. So I would recommend uh, leaving that on. And then you can add some security so that just not anybody can connect to it. Uh, next up is the firmware upgrade. Like I said, these guys are upgrading the firmware almost weekly, I think it is the, the schedule I've seen so far. And so right now you can even see that I have a, a minor version upgrade. I just hit upgrade and it'll say, please be patient. This might take a little while. When the Omega has rebooted, the firmware upgrade will be complete. Uh, do not unplug the Omega during this process. This gets a little weird because it's not entirely, this is the screen that you'll see uh, forever. It'll never refresh. Um, and you'll see if you're not paying close attention to the Omega, the light will go off and start flashing again like we saw at the very beginning. But uh, it's best to just maybe get up, walk away, grab a snack, come back in a few minutes just to make sure that you're not power cycling it in the middle of the upgrade. And so we'll go ahead and do that now. I'll let this finish the firmware upgrade and then I will come back in and we'll continue. Okay, that took about three minutes to flash. And now I'm back on the login screen here. And just to show you after a reboot, uh, my Wi-Fi is connected to my home network, not 
connected to the Omega at this point, and I'm still able to do the omega-1acd.local. Brings me to the login screen. I will go ahead and log in here and head back over to settings. Uh, and you'll see the firmware upgrade. We are on the latest that we'll check. It says no upgrade required, it looks good. And then there is this option I was mentioning before, factory reset. Uh, like I said, however, when you do the factory reset, it doesn't take you back to the very first getting started experience. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but okay. Now from any of these applications from the dashboard to get back to the main dashboard, you just click up here in the upper left-hand corner. It'll take you back. And the next thing I want to look at just real quick is the status app. And you'll see it just has some interesting information here about the processor speed and how much memory, uh, flash storage, what you're using, uh, some network information, just some interesting status information. And You'll also notice now that I have this little icon down here. This, this shows that I'm in the status application, but I still have this kind of smaller gray settings one. And if I click on that, it takes me right back over to it. And so I can kind of switch between applications that I've opened. I have not found a way to close these um, just to switch between them. But anyway, that's kind of useful when you have them open. It's a, it's a way to quickly switch between them. We'll come back to the dashboard here. And now some of these other things you need to have specific expansion boards for, like the OLED control, PWM control, relay control. Those are specific applications for those expansions. Um, I don't have um, any of those to demo at this point, uh, but I wanted to show you just a couple of other things. Uh, that's up here in the upper right-hand corner, we have the name of your Omega. If you click on this, these are your power options. You can log out, shut down, restart. Um, I would recommend not just pulling the power from it. Uh, it is an operating system running. And so um, I don't know if that would screw anything up. Um, I don't want to find out. It's just always best practice to shut it down normally. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to show you here, um, really quickly, the editor. This is the first glimpse that you'll get. If you're not aware, the Omega is just running OpenWRT under the hood, which um, is a flavor of Linux. And you'll just see these, this normal Linux looking directory structure. These are folders, you can click on these, bin. Uh, if we click on that, it'll show you um, files and things in there that you can actually edit. You can create new folders and files this way. Uh, so that's a way to edit the, uh, the file system there. And then we have this idea of a terminal. Now we can SSH into this, and I'll, I'll do a separate video on connecting to your Omega that explores all those options. But from the dashboard here, if you click on terminal, this opens up a regular terminal. And you do, even though you're already logged into the dashboard, the terminal doesn't know that. So you have to log in again. So we'll do root and onion ear. And this is the, the onion omega shell. Um, you can run commands like you would um, in Linux here. And just to show you that, we'll just do ls dash show the root, it shows all those folders and things like that. And uh, an interesting thing here, I said I didn't know how to close down the applications. And I'll show this when we're done, but you don't want to type exit here. That would be the expected behavior. You type exit, it exits out of the terminal, takes you back to the dashboard. And that's not what happens. I'll, I'll show you that surprise kind of at the end. But really quick, last thing I wanted to do before we wrapped up this getting started video is, you know, you have your Omega, you've got it started up. What's the very first project that we do in hardware? It's normally the blinking LED, the kind of the hello world of hardware. Now, the nice thing about the expansion dock is we have an LED on board. We have an RGB LED and it's this, um, I don't know how well you can see it. It's this guy right here. It's kind of a bluish green teal color right now. And there's a built-in command line tool to be able to change that called EXP LED. And the way we do that is we type the command and then we give it a, an, an RGB value in hex. And if you're not familiar with hex colors, uh, I'll link up a website below. You can see how to choose different colors um, and then it'll give you the hex value. But basically there's, there's hex digits that represent the red, green, and blue values. So we start a hex by doing zero X and then FF is uh, 255, that's all red, that's the first number, and then we do 00 for green and 00 for blue. This should change our LED to red. Let's hit enter. And there you go. I don't know how well you can see that. It changed red. Pretty cool. And then you can just go through some options here. 
Uh, we'll do 00, zero FF00, zero zero. so that's um, all green. So now it should change to green, like that. And then we'll do blue. I hope these colors turn out okay on the video. I think you can see that it is changing color. I don't know if you can exactly see the colors. Um, but take my word for it, it's blue now. And you can also put in some you know, random numbers in here, A, B, B, C, C. I have no idea what color that is, but if I do that, uh, it's kind of more of like a white looking color. So anyway, you get the idea. That's kind of the way right out of the box you can start playing with it, interacting with hardware. I'm gonna make some other videos to show you some more advanced hardware interaction with your Onion Omega, but hopefully this has been enough to get you started kind of get your feet wet and, and get the platform running for you. And uh, just real quick, I wanna show you this before we, we close out here. If I hit exit, instead of actually exiting, it just says, ah, actually this is a new firmware upgrade. Before you would get a session closed message and you're stuck, you don't ever come out of that. Now you just get a flashing cursor line uh, that doesn't do anything. I guess you can type, but you're in a, kind of a broken terminal state. This will not fix itself until you reboot your Omega. There's no getting out of this now. I mean, even if you switch over here to the editor and then come back to terminal, it's still just in this state. So don't type exit. That will not do what you expect it to do. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions about the Omega, please send them my way. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I will try and find out for you to get you that answer. I uh, love to hear about your experiences playing with the Omega or what kind of projects you're doing with it. Always interested in those. And until next time, I wish everybody happy hacking.